Today's video is all dedicated to open AI, artificial intelligence, and a talk about garden design and its future. My name is Katarina, I'm a garden designer, and I see you next. Welcome to another video from Garden Design Tools and today's video is a little bit different. We're not going to talk about any software in specific. We're going to talk about an experiment I did using OpenAI platform. So what is OpenAI? And I'm going to read directly from their website. Um, OpenAI is an AI research and deployment company. And they say that their mission is to ensure that artificial general intelligence benefits all of humanity. And this is 50% amazement, amazing and 50% scary. And it's, to be honest with you, I, after doing this experiment yesterday, I'm my first conversation using a chat GPT um, in the open AI platform was two days ago. And I was totally amazed, but really hurt my brain trying to figure it out the actual consequences of, of this for all the sectors. Okay. So, and being really specific in garden design, I wanted to see, um, how far it could go to actually maybe design, um, a, a garden. Um, so my whole conversation was about garden design and that's what I'm going to share right now. Uh, so this, as you see here, was actually um, the result of uh, a conversation and talking about Mediterranean gardens and what the plants I could use and where I could plant them in a garden bed. OK, so this was the suggestion using chat uh, GPT. Uh, and I'm going to uh, actually um, show you the conversation. So you can just have, um, and I, I really suggest everyone to try it out um, because I don't think we can close our eyes to this and, you know, pretend that's not going to happen um, because it's really interesting um, to see uh, how much this is going to affect us as professionals if you're in, the, in this sector and, or any other sector, to be honest. Um, and how can you become relevant so you don't become irrelevant? So this was my conversation. I wanted to see, and I'm going to have the whole uh, tra uh, transcript of this uh, in the description of this video, and I have it in the blog post already, uh, but I'm going to have it in the description of this video so you can uh, read as well. So my whole conversation was about what is garden design, and this answer is really complete, to be honest. Um, what plants, for example, for a Mediterranean climate, and it gave me a good suggestions. Um, and after I wanted more specifically, so it doesn't generate you images. Uh, it can't give you images in the chat GPT. Um, but uh, there is another another thing in the open AI website that's called Delhi. And uh, and I'm going to share there in that images after it creates realistic images in suggestions that you give it. So uh, anyway, it gives you the, the, the species is suggested before. Previously, it gives me the actual uh, um, placement on the on the on the on the bed, uh, so you can act, so that's why I figured out where to put the plants. So you know, uh, it's far from perfect. Uh, I I, do, I don't I don't agree this as a Mediterranean. I agree with the species of plants, but it's garden design and landscaping is such an emotional uh, thing when you putting the placement of the plants. There is so much things um, that I don't think is there yet, to be honest, uh, in terms of placing the plants or, but it's amazing uh, the, the amount of information it gives you. Um, it's, it's really, really scary. And, and when I asked him about an image, uh, it, it, he said he couldn't give me an image, but I could go online. There's a lot of images in books. Anyway, it's an amazing uh, assistant if you want to ask for, um, for example, specific plants, soil uh, characteristics of a specific location. It gives you a lot, of, a lot of good information. It's like it's a more curated and really much better Google search. OK, that's what, how I felt when I was interacting with it. Um, 
So I have, I did a few questions. They give me suggestions of a good garden designer, for example, and I thought it was really cool. Uh, I talk about a little bit about software, uh, online courses, um, just comparing as well. And I really agree with this comparison between garden design and landscape architecture, for example. Um, best style, it gives me suggestions of a best style for, of a garden for busy people. I found it fascinating, to be honest. For and it, actually specific tips for um, plants uh, for the maintenance um, for actually specific species. Okay, so he give me that as well. And even more amazed after I was like, I asked the translation to Portuguese of the two previous answers he gave me, and he, he translate almost in perfect Portuguese. If you if you have any other language, if you um, a native, um, if you're not a native English um, in a native English uh, speaking country, you know that Google Translate sometimes is really um, it really misses with the translation, especially in Portuguese. It translates to um, Brazilian Portuguese, uh, but he was Portuguese Portuguese, so I was really impressed with the translation. I thought that was really cool. Um, uh, and after there was some, you know, it didn't translate everything. What I did in the end of the conversation I had with it is, and this is really scary and amazing at the same time. So my question was, uh, give me a planting scheme based on the gardens of Ed and Andy uh, Sturgeon. Uh, if you know, it's a famous garden designer. So. He give me Andy Surgeon is a renowned landscape designer known for his modern minimalist style and use of bold geometric shapes in his garden designs. Here's a planting scheme inspired by his work. And he gives you, he doesn't give you the actual planting scheme, but he gives you really amazing tips to follow. And this is nothing that you couldn't come up by yourself studying his work, studying it's just it's amazing how we can come up with this together and give you like these five steps for it, you know? So use dramatic foliage, uh, plants, and main focus of the design, considering, consider using plants with large structural leaves, such as formium, cordyline, or agave, to create a strong visual impact. Add pops of color with flowering plants that have bold graphic blooms, such as Euphorbia, Alia, and Dahlia. Use the grasses and other textural plants. Add movement and interest to the design. Consider using plants like Miscanthus, Calagrotis, uh, Stipa, and add interest of movement to the garden. Incorporate hardscapes such as paving, walls, or water features to create a sense of structure and order. And use a limited palette of plants to repeat key species throughout the garden to create a crazy unified design. So this doesn't give you the design. It gives you tips that you could actually, if you study his work and you, you know, purchase his books, you could come up with this. But I still, I'm still, you know, fascinated by it. I think it's a really cool thing to try it on and see. And I did the same for Fernando uh, Caruncho Gardens, um, and this is just unlimited. It's like you have whole. Um, world resources at your fingertips in a very specific subject. Uh, so my one of my last questions was, can AI become a garden designer? So the answer was, artificial intelligence has the potential to assist with garden design in various ways. For example, AI algorithms can be used uh, to analyze data about local climate, soil conditions, and other factors that influence plant growth and to generate customized recommendations for plant selection and placement. AI can also be used to generate design layouts and plans using input for the designer and from the user. However, it's important to note that AI is not a substitute for the knowledge, creativity, and experiment experience of a human garden designer. A garden designer brings a unique perspective and vision to design process and is able to consider the aesthetic, functional, and environmental needs of the site and the client in a way that's not possible with AI alone. In conclusion, while AI can be useful too for garden design, it cannot replace the role of a skilled and creative human designer. And I love this answer, but I'm not sure about it because 
another thing that um and this is just uh this is the i don't know it's uh, version number 15 december 15 version i think is the the version number three or something of this actually um chat gpt uh, it just has a few weeks uh, uh, that it's open uh, to 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 try it out uh, by the general public. But this is going to become much better. This is going to, and I'm not sure that in the very near future, someone can go in a platform, add their uh, a plan of their garden or something like a layout. Say he has, he wants this and this and this areas in the garden. And it's not going to uh, put out a garden layout that it can implement. Um, this for me seems like this is coming uh, very, very soon. So what's the role of a garden designer in the future? And I'm just talking about garden design and landscaping, but this is for any, any, um, any actual sector. Because the, another platform he has in the open AI website is called Delhi. And I'm just going to show you. And there is a new AI uh, system that creates realistic image and art from a description of a natural language. So I'm just going to quickly share with you. So I ask, and this is one of them, for Mediterranean garden. So this is all images he creates. Okay. This is not images taken from Google. This is images that the platform created when I asked for Mediterranean uh, garden design. Okay, and this is another one. It gives you four images. And another one. And another one. So it's not, I don't, it's not impossible to imagine in, in just a couple of years it can give you a layout of a, a garden and a, and a, a basic uh, planting scheme and another search i did relating to images is give me a garden design image that uh, inspired by andy surgeon because i think it's really important especially if you're in noun garden design so because it's like you're going to uh, to ask for a piece of art or realistic art inspired by a famous uh, real world existing artist how much of that uh, how much of that is is supposed to come for, is from the artist how much you own that artist if you're just generating uh, images based on his work so this is what he gave me based on Andy Sturgeon uh, work um and it's really rough you couldn't go right now and actually you know see um try uh to 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 actually uh do a, a garden design based on this on these images uh but you know it's not missing much for actually to be to to do maybe not substitute everything but really plays a part in a, in the future of our uh, profession being in landscape and i'm saying this for garden design you can ask him to do a logo for a company with the specific characteristics and it does a logo so for graphic design for any any sector it's really scary and i think it's interesting to try it out and i'm going to put the transcribe of the whole conversation in the description of this video let me know what you think i'm scared and amazing my brain actually hurt last night just thinking about it the possibilities in terms of becoming this amazing assistant that you can imagine that you on site and you want to know all the characteristics um, imagine that you home it you know beginning on working on a project and it's it's just going to save you time if you have all the characteristics of the soil etc it's not never going to substitute, you're still going to have people to the garden, it's never going to substitute, I don't think, uh, the the emotional part that's important uh, of a role of a landscaper or a garden designer, but it's, I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> see you guys in the next video.